Hello friends, this video on food production enhancement part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next one is animal breeding. So what is animal breeding? Breeding as I said is nothing but mating. So it is the breeding of domesticated animals to improve desirable qualities. So this is very important here. This is the most important thing here. That is to get the desirable qualities. Qualities. Now, what do we mean by desirable qualities? Let us take the example of a cat. Now, you would have seen that there are many different varieties of cats which you see. Some of them have a lot of fur on their body. Some of them are very skinny. Some are very big. Some are quite small. So, there are different varieties of cats which are available. Now, any quality which is more desirable, for example, if you take, if you consider a furry cat, so which has a lot of fur over its body. So what happens due to this fur? This fur can cause a lot of allergic reactions to human beings. Now, while we were discussing about uh, in the previous lesson about allergies, we saw that these furs, when they come out of the, they tend to fall off from the animal's body and these can actually cause allergies in human beings. So this is something which is not desirable. That is, a furry cat is something which is not very desirable by human beings. So what is more desirable? More desirable would be a less haired cat. So which has less hair over its body. So if there are less hair, so the chances that the allergies will happen will also be less. So less hair, hairy is a preferred or a desirable quality. Now how do we get that desirable quality? So human beings would want that more and more cats are less haired. So in order to do that, what do they do? They mate appropriate animals. So they select, they start selecting animals which have less fur on their body and then they start mating them with some other animal. So what would be the output, the offsprings which will be formed, a lot of them will have less hair over their body. And that is how the number of less haired cat will gradually keep on increasing. Now, we have already studied Mendelian genetics where we saw that we can actually control the traits which we want to be displayed in the uh, next generation. So, all we need to do is we need to select the right parents. We need to select the parents with the right desired traits because once they are crossed, the uh, offsprings will have some traits from one parent, some traits from the other parent. In fact, they might also have certain traits which are like a blend of both. So we already know about all those concepts. So based on that, we can say that if human beings want more and more less haired cat, so they can do that by selecting appropriate parents and then mating themselves and mating them amongst each other. So with that, they can increase the desirable qualities. That is, they can have more less haired cat. And this is what is done in animal breeding. So in this different domesticated animals, they are mated with appropriate animals in order to get animals with desirable qualities in a, by to get animals which will be more beneficial to the human beings now before we talk about the different techniques for animal breeding it is very important that you understand the difference between breed and species because sometimes for many of them they both look similar so many a times i have been using different breeds different breeds so maybe that might be creating some confusion so let us clarify what is species and what is breed okay so here we go so when we talk about breed it is a group of organisms with similar characteristics now a very generic definition where we say the organisms share more similarities in a breed but when we talk about species these are organisms which again they also share a lot of similarities but the, they share less similarities when compared to a breed and here these organisms can reproduce amongst themselves so basically species is a broader term than breed so species are group of those animals which can reproduce amongst themselves it is not necessary that they will have to have a lot of similar characteristics so the similarities might be less but still if they are able to reproduce amongst themselves so that would mean that they fall under the same species but when we talk about a breed so it means that organisms which all belong to the same species. So even though they all belong to the same species, some of them might share more similarities. So they will form a breed. 
so multiple breeds exist for a species so under one species you can have many breeds whereas one species can have multiple breeds so as i said species is a broader term so in one species let us suppose you have these 10 or you have some six organisms or five organisms and all these five organisms they are not exactly identical to each other but they all belong to the same species so they have minor differences now let us assume that first and second organism they have more similarities and third fourth and fifth they are also very much similar to each other but first second are little different from third fourth and fifth so we can say that first and second belong to one breed second third and fourth third fourth and fifth belongs to another breed so we see that there are two breeds which exist for this particular species so that is the difference between species and breeds so diversity within a breed is lesser so when you say diversity that means variety or differences now here if you see if you look at the breed one these two are more similar so the differences between these two will be less but diversity within a species is more but when you talk about the species as a whole you have all these five organisms out of which these two are very much different from these three so the differences are more in a species breed are selectively bred organisms where its species are naturally selected group of organism now these breeds are being formed by they are man made that is human beings have artificially selected organisms and mated them to create new more new breeds and that is how breeds have been created like you have so many organisms you have multiple organisms within a species now if you but and all those organisms will have some differences from each other now if two different organisms within a species are mated with each other sometimes a new variety of organism is formed so that is called a new breed and that is how new and new more and more new breeds are being formed so we say that bred when you talk about a breed these organisms are selectively bred so they are artificially bred whereas species they are naturally selected group of organisms you remember the example of darwin's finches so the, the example of natural selection where from one particular species of birds almost 13 to 15 species have evolved and that happened naturally human beings did not ask the birds to mate with each other so it just happened naturally so natural selection helped in the evolution of species so here you can look at the different breeds of dogs so in dogs also they also have different species it is not that all of them uh, are, i mean they are all they all belong to the same species so in dogs also if you see the domestic dogs mostly they are canis familiaris or canis domesticus they are like uh, the domestic dogs so they are the different species of dogs but in one any of these species you have a variety of breeds and the breeds again they are also different from each other so you would see if you consider this particular breed of dog all the dogs within this breed will look almost like this but when you compare this with this one they these two belong to the belong to two different breeds but maybe that they belong to the same species so in within dogs now if you start from the beginning so dogs basically evolved from the wolves so if you see if you look at their scientific name you will be able to relate everything so the scientific name or the scientific name will have a generic name and a specific name and you know all of these now so the generic name for dogs is canis so canis is the generic name or the genus right so if you look at the scientific name for red fox so it is canis vulpes if you look at the scientific name of wolves or the grey wolves you will see it is canis lupus if you look at the scientific name of the domestic dog so the dog which we see now so that is canis canis however later over a period of time many new species came up for dogs for example so if, with this what do you get to know you get to know that all of them belong to the same genus whether you talk about the fox or the wolves they all belong to the same genus but with evolution domestic dogs came up or they evolved from the wolves now for dogs also there are many different species so the other species which exist for dogs are 
Canis domesticus. So this is for the domestic dog. You also have Canis aquaticus. So this is for the water dog. You also have the hairless dog that is Canis aegyptius. So that is the hairless dog. So these are the different species of dogs. But within these species also, for example, within Canis domesticus, you again have a lot of breeds. So this can have many different breeds. For example, the Pomerian and these way all the different breeds of dogs which you see, they are all different breeds but they belong to the same species. Correct? And different breeds again, they, they have different uh, structure, they might have different appearance. But if they belong to the same species, that means they will be able to reproduce amongst themselves. So this is the difference between breed and species. So as I said, dogs have evolved from the wolves. So here in this picture you can see that. And from this particular dog, the different breeds of dog have come up. So these are the different breeds as you saw. So as I was mentioning some time back that there can be various species for dogs. So the different species for dogs could be something like this like Canis domesticus and just writing it just for your understanding. It, Canis familiaris, Canis aquaticus, Canis aegyptius. So these are for the domestic dogs. This one is for the water dog. This is for hairless dog. So if you see, all of them belong to the belong to different species. So they all belong to different species. Now each of these species can have a variety of breeds. Like each domestic species of dog can have a variety of breeds. So this is the difference. Thank you. Please visit examfew.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.